We begin this morning with some big changes in the vaccine rollout in Washington. Yeah, that's right. Governor Jay Inslee just announced a brand new timeline for the state. So here we go. People who work in grocery stores, schools, child care, transit and all remaining law enforcement positions, they'll be eligible for the shot starting March 22nd. People 16 and older who are either pregnant or have a condition that puts them at high risk will also be eligible starting on that March 22nd date. Then by April 12th, anyone over 50 with two or more high risk health conditions, they'll become eligible. And then finally, by April 26th, eligibility expands to people 16 or older who have two or more health conditions. Governor Inslee did note that all of these dates are tentative, and he also said expanding eligibility still depends on supply and the progress that's made vaccinating the earlier groups. But I have to tell you, I am thrilled at the progress that our federal government is making in combination with these manufacturers to increase supplies. Washington is now averaging more than 43,000 vaccinations a day, which is pretty close to its daily goal of 45,000. The state is getting its first 60,000 doses of the new Johnson and Johnson vaccine at some point this week. Coming up in our next half hour, we're going to show you the newest vaccine site that's opening up in Vancouver today. In fact, Brian Clerkley will have all those details for us. Again, that's at 530. Well, thanks to the shipment of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, more appointments are becoming available at local pharmacies this week. Actually, Safeway and Albertsons will start giving out those shots today. Each store was expecting to have about 200 doses. We checked and could not find any appointments left here in the Portland area, but you can still check the Albertsons website and see what's available where you live. When you sign up online, you can select whether you want the single dose Johnson and Johnson vaccine or one of the two dose shots. Here's something else to keep in mind. Bymart and Walmart are joining the pharmacy vaccination effort here in Oregon. Costco, Fred Meyer, Walgreens and Health Mart pharmacies have already been vaccinating people. So with a boost in Oregon's vaccine supply coming over the next few weeks, what will it take to get those shots into people's arms efficiently? Pat Doris reports. Ever since a vaccine started coming through, the big restriction has been supply. We just haven't had enough. But now we're at a point where we can start to look to the future and think, gosh, what if we had as much as we could handle? What would be the constraints and how much would that be? The state did a survey. They talked to all the vaccination sites around the state. They figure eh, maybe if you total it all up, they could handle about 300,000 doses a week, which is a big number because right now we're doing about 110,000 doses for this current week. So that's more. That's a lot more. But as I started to research this and ask some experts in the area, what would the pinch points be? It was really interesting because, okay, it's not going to be the supply. It's not the storage. It's not the size of the doses or anything like that. What it could be, though, if you're looking at things like the convention center, it could be parking. That place, the garage holds 800 to 1,000 cars, and they turn people over about every 50 minutes right now. So from the time you park your car, you get in, you get the shot, you wait, and then you leave. That's about 50 minutes. So the whole parking garage kind of turns over every hour. So that becomes a restriction because it'd be hard to do, you know, four or 500,000. Now I'm making that up, but it'd be hard to do, you know, um, 1500 people an hour because you have that limiting factor. And then the other thing too is the manpower and the woman power. That's what the experts said really is a big problem. It's hard to staff the convention center now. They used to do seven days a week, 12 hours a day, and then they've shrunk it down to five days a week, seven hours a day, because it was so hard to find people to staff it. Because a lot of the people are volunteers, but a lot of the people also have other full-time medical jobs. So that's going to be the biggest pinch point probably around the state. I don't know what the exact number is and the experts don't either. They're still studying that, but hopefully by the time all that vaccine starts flowing in, they'll have it figured out. We'll see. Yeah, hope so. Okay, with all that in mind, let's take a look at the vaccination rates in Oregon. This graph shows the percentage of people who've gotten at least one dose. In most counties, more than 13% of folks there have gotten a shot. Only Clatsop and Columbia counties have less than 13%. 
The numbers are not as good, unfortunately, in southwest Washington, in Lewis, Cowlitz, and Skamania counties. Fewer than 10% have gotten the vaccine. Lewis County has the lowest rate in the state. Clark County is struggling too. It ranked 33rd out of 39 counties. Pacific, Wakayakum, and Klickitat counties have the highest vaccination rates at more than 17%. Let's get to three more things to know about COVID this morning. We start with number one, the VA Portland Healthcare System says that next week it will start to vaccinate people with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. As of yesterday, the VA has vaccinated over 36,000 veterans and staff with the Pfizer and Moderna shots. Veterans can see if they're eligible right now by going to portland.va.gov. Number two, the Washington State Department of Health is investing in new next generation technology to test COVID samples for the new variants. They want to test thousands of positive COVID samples moving forward to learn things like how these variants are more contagious or even more deadly. By doing that, health officials can make decisions before we see wide community spread. And number three, a new report shows some people who take the Moderna vaccine, they're experiencing delayed skin reactions. Doctors say people have developed large, red, sometimes raised, itchy and painful skin reactions about a week or so after getting that first Moderna shot. The reactions, though, did clear up after about a week. And those are three things to know about COVID this morning. Portland City Commissioner Joanne Hardesty is demanding an investigation into how a false report about her being involved in a hit and run became public. Last night, police confirmed she is not a suspect in the crash. This all started when somebody leaked information from a police report. A driver said she was rear ended at a red light at 148th and East Burnside in Portland. That driver told investigators she believed the person responsible was Commissioner Hardesty. Well, police looked into it and say they ruled out Hardesty as a suspect. The commissioner held a news conference saying it was all a smear campaign. When you have taken on police accountability issues as long as I have, you come to expect these kind of attacks. I've experienced them in the past and I expect I will continue to experience them. Hardesty says she hasn't even driven her car for months because of a broken lock and a dead battery. Well, a teen went to get his car checked out and ended up dealing with blatant racism at Jiffy Lube. Dustin Hawkins left the Jiffy Lube near Southeast 164th and McGilvery in Vancouver. That's when he noticed something on his invoice. Under the customer name, someone wrote George Floyd. Dustin says nobody at that Jiffy Lube ever asked him for his name. Of course, he was pretty upset about this, but he says his thoughts really remain with the George Floyd family. I can't imagine they'd be okay with a big name corporation just throwing around their deceased brother, son, throwing around his name around like that. Well, Jiffy Lube did release a statement. The company wrote on its Facebook page, this is incredibly troubling to hear. It certainly does not reflect the brand's values, the statement said. It also said we have shared this information with the appropriate franchisee and it will be addressed as soon as possible. All right, before we get to Rod's forecast, Brenda, we do want to talk about the Blazers because they wrapped up the first half of the NBA season looking to keep that winning streak going last night. Yeah, the Sacramento Kings rolled into town and they were met with big performances from Damian Lillard and Ennis Cantor. Cantor was dominant in the paint, grabbing 21 rebounds to go with his 22 points. For Dame, more of the same. He stepped up again in crunch time, 15 of his 44 points coming in the fourth quarter. He also had seven assists and zero turnovers. Portland gets the win 123 to 119. They close out the first half of the season with a 21 and 14 record. Go Rip City.